Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today we're given a few tips for welding horizontal butt welds, or square groove welds, butt joint actually. And after a good thorough cleaning of this 11 gauge uh, 6061 aluminum, which is about an eighth inch thick, which is also about three millimeters thick, it's time to get a tack weld on each end. And I am laying it down on a big block of uh, aluminum to do that. You could use steel, just needs to be a clean surface and something thick enough to where you won't melt it and weld it to the to the uh, the test plate. So I get a, a little tack on the end and when I say little I don't mean just tiny tack like a fusion tack like you might do with steel or stainless steel with no filler metal. I mean a little uh, a little bit of filler metal like several adds of filler metal and when you think you got enough you might want to add a few more dabs because aluminum tacks are pretty weak. Aluminum is hot short and we're going to tweak this when we're done tacking it anyway. So nice little button weld and it, that tack could actually be built up a little bit more. Wouldn't hurt a thing. But after I've got the tack, you see I tweaked it a little bit so I got about a two degree bend in it, maybe three. And that just lets it uh, weld a little bit better. What, it, what it'll, it'll do is it'll, if you got a little bit of a tweak in it like that, it will continue going that way. Now, if you start welding on a butt joint and it's square and it, and it bucks the other way, it makes it much more difficult to weld. It makes it more like welding in a, you know, you know, in a valley, in a T-joint, and it just doesn't, doesn't do very well at all. So this is just a practice joint. So, you know, normally when you, when you are welding something, you'll have some amount of rigidity or a roll or some, something bracing it. So that's the reason for the two-degree tweak. Now, I'm taking a few dry runs here, making sure I can reach the whole joint without hanging up too bad on anything. I'm wearing a TIG finger. This thing is going to get to be smoking hot after I've welded about an inch, so that's going to let me prop right there and slide along the joint and make the whole joint without getting uncomfortable and without burning my fingers. So for this first joint, I didn't notice at st to the start or I didn't notice when I started, but I had the argon set a little bit too low. I had it set on only about 10 CFH. Now 10 CFH is, is good for some jobs, but on a horizontal joint like this, I need to point my torch upwards. And since argon's heavier than air, I've got to have at least enough argon flow to reach the whole puddle and then a little bit around the, around the weld. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit as I go what's going wrong here. Occasionally, you'll see a little spark here and there. When usually when you see a spark on aluminum and some other metals, that means you're getting a little bit of porosity here and there. That means something's trying to outgas and as it's solidifying, it's not quite able to outgas and it kind of, you know, it kind of explodes a little bit. And you can see as I'm going here, it's not a horrible looking weld, but it just something doesn't look quite right. So when I get finished with this, I'll explain to you what that is. Now just take a peek at the bottom toe of this weld. You will notice there is a slight band of cleaning action, a little gray or white looking area. The cleaning action, the cathodic etching from the alternating current was breaking up the aluminum oxide there. There is none on the top toe of that weld. The argon was not reaching the top of the weld and therefore the cleaning action was not reaching it. Cleaning action will only go where there's argon shielding. And so I need a little bit more flow of argon just to shield that weld and weld area enough to get that cleaning action to work. So I increased it only 5 just to 15 CFH and now you can see during this arc shot here I've got a good band of cleaning action on the bottom as well as the top as well as in front of the puddle. That's much better. It's welding much cleaner. Everything's are going much better. You see the band of, of cathodic etching on the top as well as the bottom there. That's what, that's what you need. So again, I am pointing the electrode upwards a little bit because on a horizontal weld like this, that's what you need to do. Number one, you need your arc force to be pointing upward. And you certainly don't want it to be pointing downward because it just drives the puddle down and helps gravity push that molten metal down and you'll wind up undercutting the top and lots of bad things can happen. So I'm giving you lots of looks at this, as many as I can, just because I figure I can't give you too many. But just see that cleaning action work. I'm just moving about anywhere from a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch in between dips. And here I'm going to show you something interesting. I'm going to show you the back side. You can watch that, that puddle kind of form and push through. Now there's oxide film on aluminum, so you watch it barely come through there, but it doesn't melt together yet. Now it finally joins together, but it's like I'm, it's like there's a peel coat on there almost. You're not really seeing a puddle on the backside. You're pushing that puddle through, 
and that aluminum oxide on the back side is never really never really melting uh, but it is giving and pushing through so I always explain it to when I was teaching anyway to students like think of it like a kind of like a peel coat uh, a coating saran wrap or whatever it pushes through on the back side and, it, and, and the oxide film that's on the edges uh, has a great effect on it also again another look here you can see the tip of that electrode is rounded I rounded it off using the AC balance set to the lowest setting you can also just switch it to reverse polarity but with inverters it's just easier to turn the AC balance down to round the tip But again you can you can see a little line forming down the middle because there's an oxide film on the uh, sheared edge or the edge if it's not sheared anyway it's got oxide film and it's going to push it all the way to the back and you've got to get the heat right to where it pushes it and joins everything too and once again this is the electrode angle that I use pointing upward a little bit and adding filler to the top part of the puddle to kind of chill the top and, and prevent undercut so settings and stuff I use a CK360 flex lock torch and a TIG finger I use a Miller Dynasty 200 uh, DX amperage set to about 140 but using the foot pedal and hardly ever got to even you know full pedal just when I was starting out beads AC frequency on 70 AC balance 65 tungsten rounded on a block of aluminum by setting the AC balance to the max cleaning and just using just enough amps to round the tip 332nd 2% uh, lanthanated electrode 332nd 4043 filler rod number 7 gas lens cup and 15 CFH of flow on the argon and once again this is what you don't want to do is have an angle like that pointing downward where you'll get undercut thanks for watching